Severe weather swept through South Central Kentucky this Good Friday, destroying a house in the process. Utility companies across the Commonwealth are getting thousands in federal money to improve local drinking water. And several Eastern Kentucky residents are in trouble for illegally possessing foxes and coyotes for sport. WBKO at 6 starts now. From your Emmy Award winning hometown news leader, this is WBKO at 6. It's been a bumpy ride for South Central Kentucky today as we face severe weather. Hello everyone, I'm Sarah Goble. Thanks for joining us. Jean Burke has the evening off. The tornado watch in effect for much of the area has expired, but is there still a threat for severe weather? Shane Hollandy begins our newscast from the First Alert Storm Center. Answering the word, Sarah, we'll have much more of that coming up in just a little bit. Sarah? Shane, a tornado in Christian County has destroyed a home north of Crofton, sending two people to a hospital. Forrest Sanders headed to the scene this afternoon and shares with us now what he saw along the way. Sarah, this was my view from the vehicle of the Christian County Emergency Management official as we headed toward the home hit on Mannington Loop. The road to our location had dark clouds overhead and two inches of hail on the ground in some areas. But what we found when we arrived was a man who told us how lucky he feels. Misty, she was in a house and throwed her Picking up the pieces, that's all you can do. Chief of the Mannington Fire Department, Lewis Brooks, adds another trailer and two buildings were hit by the tornado, but no one was inside any of these locations. Sarah. Thank you, Forrest. Just to our south, the tornado was reported by numerous eyewitnesses in Rutherford County, Tennessee today, and hospital officials said at least 30 people were injured. Dispatchers at the County Emergency Management Agency said the area had been heavily impacted and it was in response phase after several eyewitness reports of a tornado on the ground at about midday. Power was out in parts of the city, which has a population of about 100,000, and some homes were damaged. A key date for incumbent Senator Jim Bunny's campaign is coming this Wednesday. That's when Bunning has to announce how much money his re-election campaign has raised. Bunning is coming under increasing pressure to withdraw from the race. Secretary of State Trey Grayson has said he'll run if Bunning drops out. State Senate President David Williams is also considering a run against Bunning. Kentucky general fund receipts have risen slightly in March compared to the same time period in 2008. State Budget Director Mary Lassiter says total revenue for the month reached $637.8 million, up from $637.7 million one year ago. Economic experts have forecast a decline. Sales and use tax receipts were up for the month. Property tax collections and coal severance tax revenue also increased. Corporate income tax receipts, individual income tax re revenue, and cigarette tax revenue all declined. With April 15th right around the corner, tax time is hardly the season to be jolly, but it is the season to be wary. That's because the Internet is a prime hunting ground for identity thieves. ABC's financial reporter Betsy Stark tells you how to protect your good name. Identity theft is ABC News, New York. Today on our web channel, WBKO.com, we're asking, do you think the recession is relenting? Log on with your opinion, then watch WBKO at 10 for the results. Local water utilities across the Commonwealth will be getting a $20, 20 million, $260 million from the Environmental Protection Agency. An EPA spokesperson says the funds will help the state's efforts to upgrade aging drinking water supplies and will provide jobs. The agency funds a program of low interest loans for water systems to finance improvements with an emphasis on small and disadvantaged communities. The funds will be distributed through the Kentucky Infrastructure Authority. A Fort Campbell soldier is in jail, charged with attempted murder, assault, kidnapping, and rape. Clarksville police spokesman Jim Knoll says 19-year-old Private First Class James Fye was arrested Wednesday night and is being held at the jail on a $260,000 bond. A re-indictment in February by a grand jury in Montgomery County says Fye choked a woman last September, confined her, and raped her while she was unconscious. I was in custody Wednesday awaiting a court martial on a previous armed robbery attempt when he fled. He was captured and put in jail shortly after. Several people in the eastern part of the state are facing charges accused of illegally trading coyotes. Kentucky Fish and Wildlife officials say one of the suspects, George Hill, kept the animals at a fenced in field in Madison County. Eight coyotes were seized during a raid at the property this morning. 
Authorities say the sting is a result of a 20-month investigation into the illegal buying, selling, and possession of wild-caught foxes and coyotes used for sport that spanned multiple states. Their dogs or they'd have friends' dogs come over and they would release the coyotes and the dogs would chase the coyotes. It's just a, it's like a sport. It's a sport. Hill has been arrested and charged with four counts of illegally buying wildlife and 11 counts of illegal possession. Five others were arrested on similar charges. Two received court summons and officers plan an arrest in West Virginia. Readers might be doing a double take when they see today's edition of the Courier Journal. The front page was reproduced in its entirety as an artist's rendering, from photographs to the letters, even the masthead. Only the barcode was untouched. The hand-drawn replica by Turkish conceptual artist Serkan Azkaya represents a public art partnership among the artist and the newspaper. The 36-year-old artist has done similar hand-copying projects at four other newspapers around the world, including the New York Times. But today's Courier Journal's collaboration marks the first involving an American newspaper's entire front page. Coming up, in honor of Good Friday, a Catholic church is trying to unite all denominations of Christianity. Plus, it started 21 years ago and has been going strong ever since. A coach started a winter sports program for area children and is honored in this week's Hometown Hero. Next. You're watching WBKO at 6 with Gene Burke. Sarah Goble, Shane Hollandy, and James Brandenburg.